I'm Daniel Decay, and I'm hella stoked. That was fucking sick! I just wrapped up an interview that I've been waiting a very long time to do. Just moments ago, in that chair right there, here's my interview with Destruction's Mad Butcher, the man himself, Schmear. Shit, it's Schmier. It's a very long day for you. I, I heard you say on stage it was the earliest that you've ever played yeah, a set. ever. You guys are up already. I'm proud of you. It's fucking early, I know. This is actually history. This is the earliest show we ever played in 35 years. Usually, the earliest we play on festivals is like in the afternoon or yeah. late afternoon. And I remember once we played Sweden Rock some years ago. It was also an early show, but uh, not that early. So, like everything before 12 is like, this is not rock and roll, yeah, you know? No, no, it's not rock and roll time. I gotta say, man, I've been waiting a long time to sit down with you. I've been listening to your music virtually as long as I've been listening to music. And it's always tough for me to come up with uh, a good first question to show you that I'm serious. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't have much for you except I gotta ask, how are you still so fucking cool? You've maintained you, Schmier, as yourself for so long. What's the trick, man? I love what I do, I guess, you know. I think it's important that you love what you do, you know. I'm so glad I can do this after all those years, and uh, I'm still a fan and a metalhead, and uh, I'm a lucky guy in the end, you know. When we started the band, we never thought we could go that far, you know. We were like, what's the biggest dream, you know, to play a show at the, at the beginning, and then when you go further after all those years, and we had our ups and downs, but still, it's kind of crazy that we're still around, so I, I enjoy every day. I want to ask you about uh, some real shit, though. On Banger TV, when we talk about politics and we put our videos up, it becomes very apparent from the viewers that uh, we might be one musical tribe, but politically, we're very much split. Um, I know you're very outspoken about your beliefs, and I want to know uh, some of the blowback you might get in your experiences with speaking out about your beliefs on politics. You know, for me, metal, was always a thing that deals with the problems in the world, you know. Since we started, started very early to write critical lyrics and we grew up with punk rock and everything. And for me, it was always important to have a message, you know. It's sad to see that uh, metal, you know, drifts right wing and, and uh, everything is drifting apart, you know. Us metalheads don't belong into a conservative society, you know. So I don't understand when, when, when metalheads are voting for Republicans or for conservative parties. Same goes for Nazis, you know, all the right-wing people. And uh, I believe in the, in the free world and I believe in the freedom of speech and I believe in that we're all fucking stupid to not accept that we're one world, you know. That's my beliefs, you know. And everything else, I don't believe in my fucking president as much as I don't believe in yours, you know. When you travel so much as a band, Borders are not important anymore, you know, and that's what I really learned in all those years that that you go to Russia, you know, after this we're in America and then in one week we're going to play in Russia, you know, so I will hear the opposite, you know, here I will hear, hear the American story, then I go to Russia, I will hear the Russian story, and then I build my own story, then I talk to the people, that's actually the great thing about being a musician. You can talk to the people, you don't have to believe the news, you know. You know, it's good to criticize the system, that's what metal is for, you know. And then, of course, everybody has his own opinion, of course, you know, we have freedom of speech and everything. But I know nowadays people think heavy metal should not be po political, you know, because everybody thinks about dragons and unicorns, you know, but that's not my kind of metal. No, it's not my kind of metal yeah. either. And I, I find it very interesting you talk about, even on the extreme side, Nazis. Yeah. What's, what's the answer to that? Do we need to bring everyone together or do we need to keep them the fuck out? I just don't believe why people believe in stupid ideologies, you know, and in stupid leaders, you know. All those people are making big bucks, you know, and they're all cheating on their people, you know. All our governments are basically betraying us, you know. They, they're asking for too much taxes, they put them in their own pockets. The whole system has to, has to change. This has nothing to do with metal, you know. This has to do with the whole politics of, of, of the world we live in. Anything I can do as, as a musician is still, you know, remind people about this, you know, and don't accept the systems you live in, you know. But of course, we're living in a world now where, you know, the, the iPhone is more important than what's on the news today, you know. As much as all other systems failed before, the capitalistic system also doesn't work, you know. So uh, we'll see. I mean, for me, heavy metal also has, uh, has been getting commercialized in the last years, you know. I mean, of course, all, all this also is kind of a part of it, you know. 
And there's been a lot of people say, oh my God, the, the metal board sell out and stuff, you know. Of course, you, you know, now we're sitting here and talking about capitalism on a board like this, you know. Right. As I said before, you know, we should all learn how to share again, you know, and not be greedy as we are, you know, and that's something sad to see. Do you think that perhaps this uh, political unrest and division in the world uh, makes for good arts and is, is perhaps... Of course, I mean, that's always good, you know, like uh, if you have a peaceful world, then there's nothing you can write about, you know. I think it's, uh, of course, this, the tension we have is always good for art and for, uh, for writing in, in spiral stuff, you know, and uh, it, it's my self-therapy in the end also, you know. I have to write about it and I always meet people that, that agree and say, hey, we stuck in something that is fucked up, and at least we have the music, you know. Uh, I always say rock and roll is my savior, you know, because uh, if you wouldn't have the music, my life would suck. It's incredible. I could talk about the world with you all day, I feel, but I want to wrap up quick on just a bit about music. I've heard you talk a lot about uh, the differences between, of course, the European and specifically German thrash versus what was going on in America back in the day and now. Um, but with the current state of thrash metal specifically, I'm noticing there's a lot less uh, throwback, kill em all sounding thrash, and we're getting back to more some of the punk and hardcore influence stuff, more aggressive. Um, do you have anything to say about that with modern bands? And specifically, I want to know if you've ever listened to uh, this new band, Power Trip. I listened to Power Trip, yeah, I heard the album. I, I, I listened to a lot of those young bands, you know, because for me, of course, it's interesting that those seeds are growing now, you know, it's a lot of young bands playing this kind of music again. And uh, sometimes they ask me, yeah, what, you know, what can you recommend, what, what should we do, you know? And I always say, first of all, don't expect to get famous because you're playing thrash, you know, because the thrash is, it's nothing that the girls will like, you know, and uh, thrash is nothing that will make you big, you know, there's maybe two or three thrash bands that ever made it to be really big. But it's great that the young kids are still getting into thrash, and especially when they're like between 14 and 19, there's a whole new wave of thrash going on. And of course, some of those bands are great, and we, we played with a lot of them, actually. And uh, for me, it's great to see that just to, this music is staying alive, you know, because it's so uncommercial. I'm glad that it survived.